I will be discussing some of the most important issues and events in the Middle East live on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNZK 690 AM and WDMV 700 AM. Good morning. In Afghanistan, the female national soccer team is desperate to leave the country. Are they justified in their fear of what Taliban might do to them and why? Then we have the National Afghanistan Army that didn't fire a single shot at the advancing Taliban. Some say, they donned a uniform only to get a good salary. Others say deep inside, they have a Taliban mindset. That mindset is believed to be the best way to get to the Jannah, the heavens. So to help us understand what uh, these issues mean, uh, these issues and other issues, we have a group of distinguished guests and experts. From Washington, we have Mr. Arif Ammar, who is a native of Kabul. He is also a researcher focused on political violence. We have Mr. Samah El Hadi from Michigan, who is a human rights activist. And later in the program, Mr. Mohammed Al Minshawi will join us. He is a political commentator focused on US Middle East relations. Now, we are coming to you not just on radio, but also via Facebook on Zoom. Go to the US Arab Radio, the page of the US Arab Radio on Facebook and watch us. Now, let's uh, start with some questions um, to both guests. Uh, my first question um, is, why do you think uh, the Afghanistan National Army melted away in the face of the advancing troops of Taliban? Now, let's start with, uh, with Mr. Samah El Hadi. Well, uh, good morning, uh, Dr. Atif, and good morning, uh, our uh, distinguished uh, partners and guests uh, with the, this show, and also good morning to all of our listeners worldwide. Uh, from my perspective, what's happened in Afghanistan in the last few years um, was contributed to this uh, results. Number one, the corruption among the um, previous uh, Afghani government. And this is something the Congress in the United States was able to indicate and issued a report encouraging the US government uh, to talk and implement some measures to eliminate the corruption among the Afghani uh, political and the Afghani government uh, parts. Uh, secondly, the new uh, face of Taliban. In the last few years, also three to four years, what was happening is that Taliban was establishing a public relation a network among the tribes leaders uh, through the all Afghani uh, uh, territories, uh, introducing themselves as a savior from the current corruption and the current government and assuring to the new uh, representative of the tribes in Afghanistan that they will be changing in the way that they are ruling Afghanistan. The only thing that they can guarantee for them is to maintain their authority among their territory and making sure that the profit and the revenue coming out from this territory it will be split in, in fair way between the tribes leader and the Afghani uh, new ruler to Afghanistan. If we understand that Afghanistan in the first place was not a target from the, for, of the United States to become a democratic country as much as removing the threat from the Al-Qaeda, eliminating 
Taliban from the uh, ruling and from governing the Afghani uh, territory. And uh, finally, uh, bring those who attacked the United States in September 11th to justice. So those are the contributed uh, elements and factors that showed us the result that we are unfortunately suffering now. Plus, the Afghani government was very stubborn. Uh, in a press release that the White House indicated uh, uh, President Biden talked to the former Afghani president, uh, uh, Ashraf Ghani, and tried to influence him and persuade him to change his way and talk to Taliban, take advantage of this international support for the talks at Doha and make some compromise. Unfortunately, the Afghani president, the former Afghani president, was not able and willing to make those changes, which is, as we can see, uh, showed us the results that we are facing now. Okay, uh, let me ask the same question uh, to Mr. Arif, um, and whether or not corruption is the main reason. Well, thank you first uh, for having me on US Arab Radio and good morning to everybody. Uh, I am building up on Mr. Sameh's uh, elaborations. Uh, I should add that corruption was, of course, one of the main uh, factors behind the disintegration of the Afghan National Army. And this was not only the exception in the army sector and the security, but corruption was a widespread phenomenon across the Afghan government in the past 20 years. But coming to the particular uh, collapse and uh, decay that we witnessed in the last three weeks within the Afghan national security sector, uh, there are many, many uh, reasons and many factors uh, affect, uh, behind this. Uh, chiefly, uh, the peace talks when kicked off in 2018 in Doha between the US and the Taliban. And then there was a kind of parallel uh, efforts by both the Taliban and the Afghan government to keep up fighting on the France. And there was an intensification of fighting across the different France and Afghanistan. So this was a, a kind of demoralizing uh, situation for the Afghan army. On the other side, the politicians were talking peace, negotiating peace with the Taliban. On the other hand, the Taliban were intensifying their attacks on the uh, on the Afghan national police and national army, and there were most uh, there were many many instances in the in the past three years that uh, the Afghan national army and also the rest of the Afghan security forces were on defensive mode. They did not initiate attacks. They did not initiate any kind of assaults. So they were. Only they had only the mandate and the orders to defend their posts, their bases, and this was not a good sign for a national army that were, they were equipped with the, the machinery, they were equipped with the salary and uh, equipments. So overall, the Afghan national army uh, did not receive the political support that they required throughout the peace talks with the Taliban. And in several instances, when there were small portions of ceasefire, uh, a three-day ceasefire on the occasions of Eid al-Fitr or Eid al-Azha, so these ceasefires were very, very limited. And the day the ceasefire deadline ended, so the Taliban attacked Afghan army, Afghan police forces and posts across the country, and huge death tolls were inflicted on the Afghan army. So politically, I should say that uh, one of the main reasons behind the uh, in disintegration of the army and demoralization of the Afghan army was wrong political decisions and lack of political support behind the Afghan uh, army. And then the other main factor is that you should know that Afghanistan is a multi-ethnic country and uh, the Afghan national army was comprised of different ethnic groups. And even back in 2010 and 2011, the Afghan National Army was criticized a little bit. Uh, and these political uh, frictions had their own uh, parts of representation in the Afghan army. 
We called it a national army, but of course, this was not a fully fledged national army to serve the national interests, but it was more an army that served different uh, purposes and different interests of different groups who are in, in some sort of conflicts on different issues within the country. So we had a deep domestic uh, division on a lot of policy issues in terms of peace talks with the Taliban, in terms of how to manage the country, in terms of uh, how to uh, deal with our neighbors in Pakistan and Iran and the rest of the world. So there was a, a, a kind of political friction in Afghanistan and that friction had been influenced they had it had influenced i should say the afghan national army in a larger extent so in terms of the crisis and the history of afghanistan if we look back uh, every time that the afghan army has failed to uh, fulfill their obligations in terms of saving the country's fate and future from crisis we have noticed that the ethnic line or the ethnic reason behind the uh, frictions that we have already had in the Afghan army has been one of those main reasons. For example, in 1992, when the former communist uh, government of Dr. Najibullah uh, was toppled by the Mujahideen, one of the main reasons of the collapse of the regime was the disintegration of the Afghan army based on ethnic lines. So I should also add another uh, here, another factor behind in addition to the corruption that Mr. Sami already mentioned is that Afghan army was ethnicized. And in the recent years, President Ghani um, made some provoking decisions and reforms in the Afghan army uh, that I cannot go into detail now, but if uh, the time allows that we can discuss it later, that that also led to a larger uh, extent of politicizing and ethnicizing uh, the Afghan army and at the end of the day, we had an army that it did not serve actually the country, it served the purpose and the, sir, the interest of a uh, few people in the government. Get ready for an amazing experience at Ishtar Restaurant on 15 Mile Road in Sterling Heights. Enjoy excellent hospitality from owners Ali Abagdadi and Fatty Bonham serving the best in Mediterranean food. Try Chef Ali Abagdadi's famous shawarma, the best Iraqi grills and food, and the best Arabic and international dishes. Dine in our authentic atmosphere or take out. Call 586-698-2585 or check us out on Facebook. Ishtar Restaurant practices all seafood. DC guidelines and is open every day, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Have an amazing experience today at Ishtar Restaurant, 3625 15 Mile Road, Sterling Heights. Are your hands feeling numb? Do you feel pain opening up a jar, turning a key? Are you noticing that your elbow and your shoulder are becoming stiff? Or were you recently injured in your arm? Hello, I'm Dr. Albajit Katranji, and at the Katranji Hand Center, which just recently opened down the street from the Somerset Mall, we can provide you with the latest in hand, wrist, elbow, and shoulder care. Visit us at www.katranjihandcenter.com to learn the latest techniques that we have to offer you, and I look forward to taking care of you. Visit us in Troy at 1565 West Big Beaver Road, Building F, or call Katranji Hand Center for an appointment at 248-869-4263. That's 248-869-4263. Imagine you're on a train track, somewhere miles away, a train is headed your way. You can't see it yet, but it's coming, slowly but surely. If you have prediabetes or you're at risk for type 2 diabetes, you may be on the wrong track, and diabetes could be heading your way. Bit by bit, the danger is getting closer and closer. So should you stay on the track you're on now or move to make a change and reduce your risk? If you have prediabetes or you're at risk for type 2 diabetes, you may qualify for the National Diabetes Prevention Program in your local community. This one-year program could be the ongoing support you need to put you on the right track. Not only did participants lose weight, they cut their risk of type 2 diabetes in half. Ready to get on board for a healthier future? Learn more about the National Diabetes Prevention Program and what else you can do to manage and prevent diabetes at michigan.gov diabetes. A message from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Life is a nonprofit charity that's provided humanitarian aid and development to people and communities for over 25 years, regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background. 
When disaster occurs here or around the world, Life for Relief and Development rushes in to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. Please help improve these efforts. Make your tax-deductible donation to Life now at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. Join me the first Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. I will be discussing some of the most important issues and events in the Middle East live on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNZK 690 AM and WDMV 700 AM. Welcome back to our discussion on radio. Baladi, I hope you can hear me now. Uh, I do hear you. Uh, the audio problem as uh, all of a sudden was fixed. I don't know how. Uh, but anyway, uh, I can hear the audio from the studio, and I hope you hear me too. Uh, so we are discussing Afghanistan and Taliban. Um, Mr. Samer, um, a Taliban spokesman said Afghanistan will not be a democracy. What do you think Afghanistan will be? Well, uh, my understanding is that at the beginning, uh, the... Uh, the operation, uh, when it started 20 years ago, well, I don't believe that sincerely the U.S. and the, the Europe coalition was like a, uh, a sincere about establishing a democratic uh, uh, environment in, in Afghanistan. I believe uh, the, the, the understanding of the way that the Afghani people and the Afghani population understand the ruling and the role of the government in their life is different from the Western understanding. And based on that, I can tell that uh, we're not going to be able to see a democratic country in, in Afghanistan. And because of the way that the Afghani people understand, as I mentioned, the role of government, plus the neighbor countries of Afghanistan will not be supporting this idea. We have to take in consideration the Russian and the Chinese and the Irani uh, influence in the Afghani uh, landscape. <laughs> they are not going to be happy with a democratic country in their backyard, which is going to put them under pressure to maybe follow or understand or making a little bit of compromisation in among their way, the way that they are ruling their people. So I believe that the Afghani people will stay and under a sort of uh, maybe a, a, a sort of federalization their country. And this is one of the ideas that Abdullah Abdullah, the head of the, uh, the committee that negotiate on behalf of the parties in uh, Doha was talking about. And this is not a new idea. This is since 1972 after uh, the, uh, the, uh, the former President Najib was uh, ousted out. And I think this is the best way because it respects the tribe authority and the tribe territories. How far they can go in this way, I am not sure. But again, um, establishing a government that based ruling based on a democratic way was not of the goals that uh, the United States uh, was trying to establish in uh, Afghanistan. Maybe they provided the tools, the training, the methods, the path, but it's up to the Afghani people to implement this and maintain or not. Mr. Ammar, um, not just uh, that uh, Afghanistan definitely will not be a democratic country, but as we know, Taliban is not a monolithic group, Yani. It has uh, many, many factions uh, within uh, its ranks. How likely the several uh, subgroups, uh, from the militant to the moderate to the Hanafi to the Wahhabi, uh, will engage in uh, civil war? Uh, I agree that the Taliban are of kind of very diverse groups when we uh, explore them 
down dip. Uh, so there are different subgroups and uh, they have their own sort of interpretation of the government as well as the rule across the country. Uh, but overall, uh, I should say that in terms of religious practice and beliefs, although that the Taliban, the majority of them are Hanafis, but the way that they behave and the way that they want to to transfer their idea and transmit their messages and practices to the world is more kind of uh, Salafist. Uh, I mean that there is a great deal of indication of Salafism infiltration and influence among the Taliban leaders. Uh, however, they don't call them Salafist. Uh, of course, uh, they are their, their main leaders are the followers of the uh, the Ubandi school of thought that is more dominant in the subcontinent, Indian subcontinent. And uh, the Ubandis have, of course, differences of views uh, on a lot of issues with the Salafists. So I can't go deep into that and uh, I don't have uh, full expertise in that. But in terms of political actors on the ground, the Taliban hail from different parts of Afghan uh, society as well as from different parts of the Afghan uh, territory. So the Taliban coming from the south, from Kandahar, from uh, Hilman province, uh, those Taliban are the traditional uh, calorics who, are, who have been the main founders of the Taliban movement back in 1993 and 1994. These Taliban are more trying to engage with the rest of the Afghan political factors and with the rest of Afghan society, as well as with the rest of the world. Uh, they are not in a, in a kind of belief that we should implement the harsh uh, Salafist uh, interpretation of Islam in Afghanistan, because they understand that, of course, they have problems with their own tribal barriers uh, on, on a lot of issues that can conflict their ideology of religion with the practices of traditional tribal uh, norms that they have been practicing for centuries. So there will be a clash of tribal values versus the uh, religious values. So this clash has been going on between different type, tribes of Pashtuns for the past 30, 40 years. So this is quite an important element uh, that we should continue to observe from now on that will the Taliban overcome the Pashtun tribal and traditional values? Uh, will they extinguish that or the Taliban will continue in parallel? They will be a religious extremist group as well as a national tribal group. So if they can reconcile between these two things, I think, I think that they can at least win the hearts and minds of the Pashtun population. But the Pashtuns are not the only ethnic group in Afghanistan. So they constitute less than 50% of the population. And the rest of the population is scattered across other ethnic lines that they don't agree with the Taliban's interpretation of Islam, as well as with their religious practices. So what about having... we also have uh, the armed militias uh, like the Tajik and all though they they don't like Taliban. Uh, what That's role right. what role these militias might might play, and uh, will they fight Taliban on the on the battlefield? I, of course, I was coming to that. That when the Taliban will try to impose their extremism and harsh uh, ways of ruling the country as well as to implement the ideological beliefs that they hold. This will have backlashes and as, as it had in the past uh, in the 1990s. At the moment, there is a resistance going on in the country's north uh, Panjshir province, which is some 70 kilometers north of Kabul. And there are intense fighting going on between the Taliban and the resistance uh, movement. So they have called themselves Afghanistan National Resistance Front, which is, uh, uh, the, which is a new version of the former Northern Alliance that was uh, led by former commander Ahmad Shah Massoud, the slain commander who fought the Soviets and then the resistance and the Taliban. And still it is too early to uh, judge 
and, or to jump into conclusion that who else will join the National Resistance Front uh, against the Taliban in the North. Uh, but this will be quite important to explore the the possibilities of small pockets of resistance against the Taliban and several places like the Central Highlands in Afghanistan and, uh, and also in the north of the country bordering Uzbekistan, we have uh, the Uzbeks ethnic groups that they are, uh, they have been fighting the Taliban all these 20 years, as well as the Tajiks that they have already started fighting the Taliban in north of Kabul. So of course we will uh, observe and we will, of course, there are some possibilities of further small pockets of resistance against the Taliban. Okay, when we come back from the break in a minute, we will be joined um, by Mr. Mohammed al manshawi I hope he is there. And I will ask him uh, if he thinks Taliban will be different this time around after the break. Ziad brand, quality products from our family to yours. Ziad Brothers Importing offers the finest quality products, including brands like Sultan, Kraft, Nestle, Hook, Rico Picon, Donna, and many more. Ask your retailer to carry these fine products because you deserve the very best. For more information, visit our website at www.ziad.com. That's www.ziad.com. Ziad, quality products from our family to yours. At Top Rehab Physical Therapy Clinic in Dearborn, we provide effective physical therapy sessions in order to limit pain and discomfort. Top Rehab provides physical therapy care for any diagnosis prescribed by a physician, and we regularly see and treat conditions such as stroke, TMJ, fibromyalgia, sciatica, joint pain, and more. We use a variety of pain management methods, including modalities, soft tissue mobilization, and therapeutic exercise. If you're in need of physical rehabilitation or physical physical therapy, get the highest quality health care at Top Rehab. Most insurance is accepted and we're open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday 8 to 6, Tuesday and Thursday 8 to 5, and Saturday 10 till 2. Call for an appointment today at 313-846-0555. That's 313-846-0555. Choose Top Rehab Physical Therapy Clinic on Michigan Avenue in Dearborn. Life's too short to be in pain. Kashat's Mediterranean Market in Shish Kebab offers a great array of your favorite Mediterranean meals. Meals range from lamb specialties, shawarma sandwiches, and seafood dinners. Plus, they offer big trays of your favorite food and so much more. Kashat's Mediterranean Market in Shish Kebab is located at 32839 Northwestern Highway in Farmington Hills and is open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So stop in or call Kashats today at 248-538-9552. That number again, 248-538-9552. Kashats Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab will definitely leave you satisfied. I am Atif Abdel Jawad. Join me the first Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. I will be discussing some of the most important issues and events in the Middle East live on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNZK 690 AM and WDMV 700 AM. Welcome back to our discussion on Radio Baladi. We are talking about Afghanistan, and I believe Mr. Mohammed al Minshawi uh, just uh, joined us. I hope he uh, did. Um, he is a political commentator focused on U.S. Middle East issues. Uh, so um, my question to all three guests now, and let's start with Mr. Uh, al Minshawi. And now Taliban says um, that um, the group is different now from what it was 20 years ago. Uh, do you believe so and, and how different? Uh, good morning. Uh, uh, it's too early to tell if uh, Taliban group is different uh, from Taliban uh, who want 
uh, that uh, ruled Afghanistan between 1996 and 2001. It has been only a few days since they came to control uh, most of Afghanistan. So uh, the rhetoric and the statement uh, they said so far, and uh, they said it in foreign languages, in English, are promising. Uh, they promised to, to change, uh, they promised to respect uh, uh, minority rights, uh, human rights, women rights, uh, rights of education for girls. Uh, so, uh, and they said they will not uh, host a terrorist group like they did before. So what they are saying uh, verbally is, is promising uh, and that uh, they are saying it in English. Uh, I don't know, I read report, they are talking in their local language uh, in a different tone about uh, the, 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 the need to respect the tradition as they understand it, the religious tradition. And we know uh, from previous experience, their understanding of traditional Sharia is very uh, poor and outdated. Uh, so we, we, we'll see, because as I said, I see two uh, line of, uh, of, of, of uh, Taliban. One that, uh, that speak in English to the world in a promising way and one uh, speaking in local language, which looks like the, Afghan the Taliban before. Uh, but uh, Afghanistan is different. Uh, it's very difficult to manage and to govern. Uh, within these 20 years, uh, Afghanistan gained about 8 million new people, uh, population increase, and a new wave as well of, 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 of uh, Taliban leaders. And uh, the internet and technology penetrated all Afghani uh, houses. So uh, mobile everywhere, it was not the case 20 years ago, uh, satellite dishes and uh, uh, seeing what happening around in the world is, is all over the place and Taliban can't ignore this new reality. And most importantly, 70% of Afghani people uh, are under age of 30. So that's as well very difficult to manipulate and control uh, nowadays. Um, Samah, the same question, um, uh, how different Taliban will be uh, after 20 years? Well, uh, I support uh, what uh, been mentioned about it. it's too early. However, I see uh, some strong indications that Taliban now is playing politics more than playing just uh, military uh, actions, especially with the international community and the international parties. So what we have been seeing recently is the new face of Taliban, the official spoker is the Behullah, the other uh, media uh, representative who handling the uh, social media activity, Facebook, Twitter, and others, to the point that when uh, a reporter sent a comment to Twitter, why you are not suspending uh, or eliminating uh, Taliban's uh, accounts on Twitter, uh, this official statement from the Twitter company stating that Taliban is not evincing or violating any of our policy guidelines. And they are playing this very smartly. Even their uh, international communication skills based on speaking the multiple languages is very strong. So I saw some uh, press conference and uh, some um, um, interviews with them in German, in Italy, in France, and in English. And they are all indicating that Taliban now is playing politics more than anything, or at least for now. And I, I support and understand why they are doing this. If they want to be a part of the international community, they have to speak the language and all perspective, not only by words. They have to do some actions on the ground. And also the economy at, at Afghanistan, based and live on the international contribution and funds. So at least 80% from the economy power in Afghanistan based on the contribution from the, from the international community. And this is why Af uh, Taliban started uh, seizing or controlling the borders before anything else. So they can collect the customs and make sure that they have the pipeline uh, fund from the money and finance that they can support and uh, implement their operation. And on the other hand, this will uh, weaken the current or the previous government in Afghanistan. So Taliban is now introducing themselves potentially as a part of the international community, 
and they are willing to work with the international community. They did introduce some evidence like the uh, general amnesty, like they are allowing women to go to school, we're allowing women to be a part of the work life in Afghanistan under certain, com uh, under certain conditions. But at least now Taliban understand that if they went back to the way that they tried to rule Afghanistan back in 1993, 1994, 1996, and till 1999, this is where the United States start planning to uh, get rid of them and eliminate their power, they are not going to be succeed. And they will be under a huge economic uh, sanctions, which is going to impact their influence and the way they are ruling the Afghani people. So I think they are playing a little bit smart now trying to make sure that they have the support, if not all of the international community, some of the international community. China, their immediate neighbor, is very willing to invest in Afghanistan because it's uh, right in their backyard and they want to be a part of the rebuilding of Afghanistan in lower aspects. And they are already starting funding money to Taliban. And I think uh, we're going to see some few uh, surprises in the, few, the upcoming few weeks. Mr. El Manshawi, do you think Taliban came back to power with the implicit, at least implicit, blessing of the United States? Uh, I don't think so. I think it is uh, the, the reality on the ground, uh, the balance of power inside Afghanistan. Uh, Taliban is, is, is part of the society, and the uh, United States came to understand this reality in the uh, time of uh, Obama uh, years, uh, they tried to negotiate and they were close to have a deal. Uh, however, the rise of the ISIS uh, in Syria and Iraq uh, was, was a bad sign and uh, Obama uh, doesn't uh, go ahead in negotiation. Uh, but uh, I believe uh, uh, there is no conspiracy thinking or, 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 or idea about uh, America blessing Afghanistan. They just uh, believe in, in the balance of power and, and they can't ignore it after 20 years. They try to depend on corrupt elite of Afghanistan uh, uh, and they uh, assumed, uh, like most Arab country, a local corrupt elite would be good to govern, but uh, Afghani nature and Afghani people I believe uh, more harsh to control by, by corrupt elite that uh, supported by by the West, uh, as the case in most Arab countries. Uh, Taliban, we like them or not, uh, that's a different story, but they are uh, indigenous group of Afghani people. Uh, they uh, have popularity uh, as well, we like it or not, uh, within a lot of Afghani, besides the, the, the Western-oriented elite, elite uh, and, and they represent a sort of uh, social justice uh, as, as well, we like it or not. but. Uh, uh, I hope they will they will provide uh, goods and service to the Afghani people who care uh, less about how they interpret Sharia and they would like to improve their standard of life uh, uh, in daily basis. Mr. Manshawi, a minute ago you said that uh, Taliban's understanding of the Sharia, Islamic law, is poor. Is that part of the reason why they use violence? Uh, yes, but I believe uh, what I meant by what I said, it's, it's, it's a pure interpretation of Sharia, like the, the Hudud, for example, they want to, to uh, apply some rules that uh, early Muslim did it 1500 years ago. So I believe it's, it doesn't suit today's uh, Afghanistan or today's uh, uh, human societies. Uh, that's what I mean by, by, by implying their interpretation of Sharia. Uh, I believe if uh, Prophet Muhammad was alive today, his daughter will go to school, uh, no doubt. And uh, he will seek a good future for them to be professional ladies, uh, successful in any society. So that's what I mean by poor understanding of uh, Sharia. Okay, Mr. Samah, um, again, back to my question earlier to Mr. al Manshawi about the U.S. position. Do you think that Taliban came to power with the implicit support of the United States? Well, the United States definitely uh, understood, the, as mentioned, uh, the, uh, 
the distinguished uh, position of uh, Taliban in the Afghani community. And this is something that started back as uh, Mr. Muhammad Nchawi said uh, back in Obama. And we have to remember that the one who started the arrangement of the withdrawal was former President Trump when he invited the Taliban uh, delegation to Camp David in the same night of September 11, which is, was a shock to the American community. And at that time, they started the talks about how, when, and where to withdraw from the uh, from Afghanistan. However, the United States, uh, I believe there is like maybe uh, unannounced understanding that we can be a partner for you. However, there are three conditions you must guarantee. Number one, there is no uh, harvest or no uh, welcome uh, environment at Afghanistan for the international tourism group. Secondly, you have to understand that being a part of this agreement, you have to maintain a minimum level of human rights in Afghanistan. Number three, in the future, you have to work with the United States to guarantee and protect the interests of the United States in the regions. And I believe that Taliban with these three conditions, they can survive. Is that gonna be a problem for them to maintain things, especially with the new improvement in their ideas and their interpretation to the international relation and the understanding of the importance of being a part of the international community. Uh, otherwise, the United States will accept to work with Taliban. And this is not only the position of the United States government, this is the position of most of the Europe, United uh, Europe uh, countries and also the understanding of the neighbors in the uh, area of Afghanistan. Everyone is willing to work with Taliban However, Taliban need to improve and make to sure and provide evidence that they are willing to work uh, with the international community. When we come back from the break, uh, we will discuss how Taliban might treat uh, the Afghani woman to, after the break. When it comes to reproductive medicine, IVF Michigan Fertility Centers are the recognized leaders. With locations in Bloomfield Hills and five other cities in Michigan and Ohio, IVF has experts in all aspects of the field. As a founding member of IVF Michigan Fertility Centers, Dr. Nicholas Shama is one of the leading reproductive endocrinologists in Michigan and Ohio. Dr. Shama has performed over 10,000 IVF cases and has helped thousands of couples fulfill their dreams of parenthood. American board certified in both obstetrics and gynecology and reproductive endocrinology and infertility, Dr. Nicholas Shama is a very caring, compassionate, expert physician that understands not only the medical but also the emotional toil of infertility on his patients. When it's time, get personalized care from Dr. Nicholas Shama at IVF Michigan Fertility Centers in Michigan and Ohio. Call toll-free 855-952-9600, 855-952-9600. Enjoy the first Syrian-style cuisine in Michigan. At Damas Cuisine and Catering, you'll find a wide selection of Syrian foods and sweets in our menu, like frike, poise, grape leaves with steak, mishawi platter, hot mahashi, char-grilled kebang, shawarma, and much more. Get super-fast delivery from Damas Cuisine and Catering right to your door. Order online at damascuisine.com forward slash menu and track your order live. Damas Cuisine and Catering, 28841 Orchard Lake Road in Farmington Hills. Call 248-987-4985. When you're looking for the best in optical care, Dr. Iman Nakash is your doctor to see. With years of experience and thousands of successful procedures performed, you can trust your eyes to Dr. Iman Nakash. See Dr. Iman Nakash and his professional staff for your eye care needs. There's two locations to serve you. In Hazel Park, call 248-336-3937. 248-336-3937. In Rochester Hills, call 248-299-3937. That's 248-299-3937. I am Atif Abdel Jawad. Join me the first Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. I will be discussing some of the most important issues and events in the Middle East live on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNZK 690 AM. 
and WDMV 700 AM. Welcome back to our discussion of the situation in Afghanistan on Radio Baladi. And uh, I understand that uh, before I proceed to discuss uh, Taliban's treatment uh, of women in Afghanistan, um, Mr. Um, Arif Amar is going to leave us. He needs to go. So I want him to answer the question before he goes. Um, is a question uh, we discussed it with um, our two guests uh, a minute ago before the break, and that is whether or not uh, Taliban's um, return to power happened with the implicit support or blessing of uh, Washington. Uh, well, there is a huge debate now going on even in Washington about the flout, they call it a flout peace talks with the Taliban that took place back in 2018, 2019, and then in 2021, that led to the uh, withdrawal of the US troops from Afghanistan, and then uh, the tragic or shocking events that we uh, witnessed in Kabul. Of course, uh, there has been policy mistakes and uh, policy loopholes uh, in terms of dealing with the Taliban uh, by the Washington. Uh, the peace talks and the negotiations that took place in Doha between U.S. government and the Taliban has raised a lot of questions about uh, the implications of these talks over the future U.S. influence in the region, as well as the trust or the confidence uh, that the U.S. might have or the allies might have on the U.S. in the future. So there is a huge debate on that. However, I can't, uh, there is there's no indication of a kind of deal that has taken place uh, behind the closed doors that we should say on that uh, reason that, okay, of course, the US has helped the Taliban. But of course, uh, the Taliban gained international reputation and recognition. Uh, and uh, after the talks kicked off in Doha with the Talibs. But however, there was a very blunt message by the US uh, uh, negotiators with the Taliban that if you come to power and if you're going to take uh, the peace talks further with the Afghan government, so you must establish an inclusive government in Kabul. And that inclusivity should resemble in a way that the rest of the actors in Afghanistan politics should not feel marginalized uh, in the future setup. So that takes us to the future that if the Taliban are going to implement or if the Taliban are willing to include other important political actors in their government. So far, there is no indication on that, but however, there are a lot of anxiety within the Afghan communities, different ethnic groups about the future behavior of the Taliban with them, as well as the Taliban's harsh policies that might implement and that might affect the life of the people in Afghanistan. I should repeat again that Afghanistan is not a single ethnic society. It has it is a tribal, multi-ethnic society. And uh, as uh, the other guests suggested, the country is has been resistant to the centralized government. And a centralized government has not solve the issues of that country for the past, uh, at least in the contemporary history of Afghanistan. So Taliban have a lot of uh, challenges ahead in terms of delivering on their promises that they made during the peace talks with the US. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Uh, yes, go ahead. I have, I'm finished. Oh, okay. We uh, Thank you very much and have a good uh, weekend. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Arif Hamar had to go now. Uh, okay, uh, now uh, my question goes to Mr. Mohammed El Manshawi. Um, Mr. El Manshawi, a minute ago you said that uh, something very interesting. You said that if the Prophet Muhammad um, were living today, he sure would send his daughter to school. And my question is, if the female soccer national team in Afghanistan happens to win 
the World Cup, for example. Uh, do you think Taliban would uh, take pride in that? I, I, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> it, it's very complicated. Uh, as I said, it's too early to tell. We don't know yet if uh, uh, school uh, is still open and accessible and universities to, to girls or no. Uh, I didn't see any uh, names of, of prominent uh, ladies who will join the, the cabinet. Uh, so I believe it's still early to, to tell, but I wish they will be smart enough uh, to, to satisfy not the West uh, here, but the Afghani society. Uh, people uh, sent their uh, daughters uh, to schools uh, in the last 20 years. Uh, they were able to work in the last 20 years. So to reverse it, it will be going backward against uh, not the international well, but the well of most Afghani people. Uh, Afghani ladies like everywhere, half of the society, and I believe they will uh, if they have the choice, they will prefer and they will uh, admire education and working to be professional and to depend on, uh, on themselves uh, in today's uh, world. Uh, uh, the economic reality in, in Afghanistan is very dire, it's very bad. Uh, it's one of the poorest uh, countries in the world. And without women participation in all aspects of the society, there will no hope for Afghanistan under Taliban or without even Taliban. Mr. Samah, do you think that the Afghani uh, people themselves, not Taliban, the Afghan people themselves have changed over the past 20 years? Well, definitely, the, there are changes in the Afghani population in regard to demographic. When you see the, uh, the, uh, the average age of the population now is a little bit higher also. Uh, from the last um, statistics, if I remember right, it's about maybe 42 of the populations are youth under the age of 32, under the age of 30. So uh, there is a, those are changes that came with the 20 years of uh, ruling without uh, Taliban that's allowed them to be introduced to the new technology and cell phones, uh, social medias, uh, satellite TVs and other Plus that the economy in the last 15 years have a little bit of improvement because of the opportunities that are generated by the international community and the support of the international community uh, showed them that there is some ways that they can make profits, collect revenue without being a part of the international uh, drug trade. And those changes will push the, uh, the Taliban control 100% over the Afghani people uh, away a little bit, especially when it comes to human rights, when it comes to women's rights and children's rights. Uh, I think Taliban now will understand that they need to compromise. They need to provide uh, a, a gray area between what they uh, want and how they want it, and also what the, the uh, Afghani people and the international community wants. Uh, this area will allow them to survive Will, will allow them to get an international recognition, which is very important for them. And this is why we, I, I personally see some positive uh, indications and from their side that they are willing to do this and be flexible when it comes to fundamental issues that they are uh, refusing to do any compromisation back in days when they are in full control between 2001. Mr. El Manshawi, as you, you heard, uh, uh, Mr. Samah just said that the economy, uh, the Afghan economy, has improved a little bit over the past 20 years. Um, however, um, the central bank in Afghanistan says that foreign currency reserve is almost zero now, zero. So uh, how can Taliban run the country unless the U.S. Uh, unfreeze the assets that they have in U.S. banks? No, I, I believe it's more complicated than the assets here. The $12 billion U.S. freeze, it won't uh, uh, dramatically change the nature of the Afghan economy. Uh, uh, it can be spent in one year in food and service in Afghanistan. However, the country is very poor. There is no source of, of, of uh, uh, economic uh, prosperity there. There's no 
uh, raw material, gas or oil or something easy to, to, to get from the land. Or, and there is no trade, there is no harbor. It's landlocked uh, country uh, with hardly any even agriculture. Uh, so they used to live in, in, in foreign aid, international aid for decades. And I believe uh, now they need to, to think dramatically about uh, how they can uh, survive in today's uh, economy. Uh, the West and the United States, uh, they will support eventually, uh, uh, but but without uh, putting some foundation for the economy, it will not uh, sustain itself. Uh, societies like Afghanistan can't live in foreign aid forever. And I believe the le new leadership should understand this reality and, and find a way out of this poverty. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, they have uh no immediate access to 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 foreign currency uh, as you correctly said but even okay mr have... mr shall we thank you very much we got uh, the point but we are running out of time thank you mr okay. muhammad el minshawi and thank you mr samah el hadi and have a good weekend